Chi Guji Pepper Tree and today I want to share with you a little bit about the hole punches that I use for my planners. I know some of you have been asking what kind of hole punch do you use so that's what I want to cover on today. Now to start off I'm going to be talking about the punches that I use for my disc bound notebooks and planner and this is a happy planner. It's a totally different size from your standard US letter size which is this Leminger notebook right here or this half a letter size which is referred to the junior size and then this is my ARC notebook. However, even with all these three I use the same punch and well punches depending on where I'm going or if I'm just working at home. If I'm traveling out and about to meetings and I just want to be able to punch something quickly and put it right into my notebook, then I take this Levenger punch with me. It's a portable punch. It's called the one, two, three punch. And that's because there are three sections right here that you just unlock and then you can insert your paper and punch. They also have little guides right here. You can shift this little guide on the side to the sizing option that you need it for. And I don't know if you can see it because it's not printed on it. It's just engraved right into it. It says letter, junior, compact, card, and PDA, micro PDA size. So you can shift this. But the way you would punch this is you would just take your piece of paper and this is a letter size paper. I already punched this side, but I'm just gonna show you guys quickly. Insert it in until it bumps into this guide right here and until you can't push it any further in this direction then you just push down one two and then three and then you have your holes right here and then you can just stick it right into your notebook or your planner now with this one the capacity is only one sheet so it's not meant to punch a lot of sheets at the same time nor is it meant to punch laminated covers now with this one you can punch several sheets at the same time. And this is my favorite one because it does the job that I need it to do. I'm just showing you the front end of it. This is the top view. And you can see that I have little washi tape here and masking tape on the sides. And that's because these are kind of like my homemade guide for my happy planner. It does have this little shifting guide right here for letter size and the junior size. and. Um, whatever other size that you need to adjust it to. Obviously it doesn't come with a happy planner size because a happy planner is not a standard size. There's a little lock right here and so you just need to press down and then pull the lock towards you so that it releases. So you're gonna press down and pull. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna push down and then release that and then it opens up like this. So now that it's opened up the dies are now lifted up and I just need to insert my Happy Planner cover and I just make sure that the little stem of the mushroom lines up with the center lines of every single punch. So I would just line it up like that and then once I make sure that that's the, uh, the stem lines up with the center of each die then that's when I start to mark off where I need the top of my cover to be. And so when I'm punching covers, all I need to do is just insert the laminated piece, push it all the way to where I have my guide right here for the Happy Planner, and then push down. Now for the inserts, I do the same thing. I just take one of the inserts and line it up, line up the stem to every center of the dies here and then mark exactly where I need that paper to sit in order for it to be aligned. For the inserts, I just put it in here, move it to the side where the Happy Planner inserts should line up. And for the covers, I put them in and then slide it over to where the covers should line up. And you could do up to 15 sheets at a time. And I've always been doing 10 millimeter laminated covers with this thing and it punches it so smoothly, I don't think I would go with any other kind of punch for covers since this one does it so well. Okay, now on to the punch that I use for my six ring binder planners. Now this one, I purchased it off of Amazon and I will also leave that link below. And to be honest with you, this is my second punch with them and I'll explain why I 
bought a second one. But just to go over the specs really quickly so you can have an understanding because I'm thinking that the brand name is called the Open Paper Punch because I can't find any other names uh, that are associated with this. So I'm just going to refer to it as the Open Paper Punch and model number is PU-462. Now everything about this punch is metal exterior except for this little slip off piece where you can just empty out your uh, little hole punches that you made. And if you look on the bottom right here, you can't really see it because it's embossed right in, but it does say oil. And I guess it's just a reminder that, hey, every now and then you may need to maintain this by just adding a few drops of oil. Now, the reason why I went with this one is because of how easy it looks like to be able to adjust your punches. And so if you just move it over until it clicks on both sides, then that's for your personal size or your medium Kiki case. And if you move it over one more time, it's for the smaller binders. But all the way is your A5s or your large. Now there's some guides right here and you can see they have little indents right here. That's the center and then there's more guides along the edge. However, I don't always use these guides because sometimes I I'm just eyeballing it and I don't really know if it's really centered and what I don't want is to be punching several and then finding out once I put them all together that the holes are so off. So I'm going to show you later on in the video how I make sure that all my papers align every single time. With this punch, it is an open-ended punch. Whatever paper size you use, you will be able to work with this because it could be as tall as you need it to be or as small as you need it to be. Now, most people use an A5 size for the maximum, but there are some who like to take their Happy Planner or their Erin Condren and chop it up and put it into their Carpe Diem or their Kiki K's. And so it's a great thing that it is open-ended too because I know with a Happy Planner, it is a much taller dimension and most people just trim off the top or the bottom by a quarter of an inch or half an inch total and then it will still be taller than an A5 insert but then you can still punch it because there's no limitation on how tall it could be. Now I'm going to show you the other punch that I had initially and it's the same one However, with this one, they have a little instruction label saying push the center. I've read reviews on this punch and people have complained that it has broken on them before. And I'm guessing that's the reason why they put push the center here. I am more uh, dominant on my right hand. So without thinking, I do apply more pressure on the right hand. And so I guess this is their little reminder that you need to push the center so that it gives it a very even distribution of pressure throughout and so that you don't accidentally break your housing. Now, I did break my housing on this one and I'll tell you how I broke it. Um, first of all, I didn't push in the center. I pushed it with both my hands on the side and without thinking, I do push harder with my right hand. And not only that, I don't think it's meant for punching too many sheets at the same time. I've been able to punch three, four very standard sheets and I also punch 20 pound text weight up to three or four sheets at a time and it does it fine but I also broke it because I think I punched too thick of an item. I punched a 10 millimeter weight with a 100 pound cardstock in between and that is very sturdy and thick. And so um, I don't recommend you punching something that's too thick. With this one, the new one that I have right here, I tried going down to seven millimeters with a hundred pound cardstock in between and I noticed that it didn't punch cleanly all the way through. However, I punch dashboards all the time and I punch them at five millimeters laminated with a hundred pound cardstock in between and they were able to handle the five millimeter and a hundred pound cardstock on top of that. Now I did order another brand just to test it out so once I get it in I'll do a video review on it and give you my comparison between the two that way if you're still debating which one you're going to purchase then at least you'll have 
some insight from somebody who has both and uses both. Now to show you how I do my punches so that they're always aligned on my inserts all the time. What I use is this little Fiskars mat. So what you see here are pieces of scrap cardstock. I actually just used the leftover pieces that I was cutting from a dashboard so they are laminated and no matter what you use just make sure that it's a thicker piece of paper. Don't use your insert pages because this is not going to work for it. You want cardstock or chipboard or something that is thicker and the reason being is that it needs to be able to butt up against the sides of this when you insert it in so what I did was I made sure that I lined these up so that I can just guide my punch through and butt it up against this last piece right here so you can see that it's butted up against that it's not going to shift if I shake it and it's not going to move back anymore if I pull against it. And then these two strips right here, it's just for my alignment for my insert. And because I use eight and a half, I just make sure that on my grid right here, it's exactly eight and a half. And then it's also exactly centered with where my punch will go. So I'm going to put my punch here, slide it along the guides, make sure it butts up against that put in my insert. If I pull on my insert towards me, then it does have a stop to it. And then I just line it up against this and on this side, and then I just punch. Okay, now that I have my inserts punched, I'm just going to line them up. So making sure all the edges are straight. And I'm just going to bind it really quickly together just so that it doesn't shift while I'm handling this. And then you can see how the holes line up so nicely. And if they're off, they're probably off by just a hairline. But other than that, it's not messy. If I were to just guess while I punch, it's probably not going to be as well. What I do with this mat is I keep this mat as my little guide and then if I ever need to just flip it over and use the surface for working then I can do that. Well I hope that this video has been helpful in letting you know the type of punches that I use and what my thoughts are behind each punch. If you have any questions please leave it in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks! Bye!